FM Radio for the Agile Community. www.agile.fm. This is a re release of a podcast episode recorded back in 2012. In this recording, I speak with Ken Schwaber, co creator of Scrum and founder of Scrum.org. I thought I would re release this gem as this provides wonderful insights by Ken about the birth and birthplace of Scrum and his relationship with Jeff Sullivan. If you're interested in how everything started back in the days, this one is for you. If you like the podcast, go to iTunes and give it a quick rating. Even better, write a brief review. That helps a lot and closes the feedback loop. And now to Ken. We are meeting in Burlington and I, I want to come to this because I want to stress the fact, uh, not from a nostalgic viewpoint, because we're here at the birthplace of Scrum, where everything happened in the building. Yes. We're actually inside the building where Scrum started, the roots. And, and we're in Burlington, Massachusetts, about 10 miles west of um, Logan Airport in downtown Boston. And, and this is where uh, my company um, was back in 1990 through 95 um, when Jeff Sutherland and I developed Scrum. Um, when I first was working with him, he was at Easel Corporation, just about half a mile from here. And both of us, you know, part of our, our proximity is one of the things that spawned um, Scrum. We were able to work together pretty closely on the whole subject. Mm -hmm. How was that ninety five? How was this area? Was this like startup companies? What, what's, what was the what was the vibe out here? This this was a um, huge number of startups because we were seeing in the area at the same time the demise of DEC, Wang, Prime, Data General. So a lot of people were being let go from those really large companies and they were forming small companies and my own company then was able to hire them to do um, development with people who were so advanced that we wouldn't have been able to touch them mm -hmm. before those companies started folding. So this worked very well for myself and for Jeff. We were able to hire um, really good software developers that we probably wouldn't have been able to hire before. Mm -hmm. Was How did you... So you worked in this building here. Jeff was half a mile away, you mentioned. And right. So how did this initial contact... How, how did this happen? I mean, how did you probably didn't just pick up the phone and call each yeah. other, there had to be some link. You know, Jeff and I have been friends for 30, 35 years, so we've been in connection the whole time. Um, at that time, my, my company was building ALM, Application Lifecycle Management Software, for the heavyweight um, waterfall methodologies for Coopers, for IBM. Mm. And um, Jeff knew that, and he was working with Uppsala at the time, and Uppsala wanted to know what the best methodology would be for object-oriented. And Jeff, knowing my work with uh, large methodology companies, came over and asked if which one of them I was using at, mm -hmm. at the, my company. And I said, absolutely none of them, Jeff. You know, if I were using one of them, I'd be out of business. Mm. We need to be very flexible. We need to respond to change. Our technology doesn't work. Uh, and he said, wow, you sound like you have the same problem I do. He said, I'm working on something we called Scrum. Why don't we come over and collaborate on it and work on it? Because I think it might be something that really boosts all of, of object-oriented. Mm -hmm. and, and indeed it did. So it, that's the, the question from Oops led to Jeff about what his best methodology right. led to, I think, um, a lot of the impetus for Scrum. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, what I, I, I think I remember correctly, you both were home in the small talk community yes. at that time, right? Yes. So you built products using small talk? Yes. So did Jeff. Yes. And it was one of the first tools where you could rapidly um, code, test, build, mm -hmm. deploy um, increments of software. Mm -hmm. So it was an enabler um, for iterative incremental, which Scrum is based on, of course. Right. I myself uh, rooted in small talk, but many years after that. Um, people used to be embarrassed of you small talk are now coming out of the woodwork so this is good yeah. <laughs> um, so today the reason we're here is also obviously we could be just be visiting this building but the building is now occupied and we came full circle we came 360 right occupied now by scrum.org right and downstairs from us in the initial space we had is a 
um, part of a very large software company called Foliage Software, mm -hmm. who uses Scrum, and whose founder, Steve Morlock, was one of the first employees we had when we were developing Scrum. That is awesome. Yeah, it's a full, full circle over yeah. and over again. Wow. Yeah. So now you're upstairs? Yeah, perhaps that's symbolic. We've, we've moved up. Perhaps that's symbolic, <laughs> right? <laughs> like one floor up. Yeah, they're and down in the trenches developing software, and we're right. <laughs> working on on other stuff. But um, uh, that's that's a very interesting place, the Scrum.org, because you founded this uh, uh, this new place, home to Scrum, uh, Scrum.org, uh, about three years ago. Exactly um, three years ago, I founded it right after I had a near-fatal bike accident and uh, founded it with um, Alex Armstrong mm -hmm. and um, um, trying to shift our focus on high-quality um, materials, intellectual property, and um, a, a high-quality community of people who were helping. Yeah. If you had to reflect on those three years... What are the what are the key things you um, is there anything from memory you see in the last three years which which stands out as breakthrough moments for you with Scrum or for for the organization itself? I, mean, I, I don't I don't want to go into all the numbers yet, but uh, well, I, I think a breakthrough moment for both Jeff and myself. Um, we saw a lot of people starting to. Um, change Scrum to suit their own needs. And, and of course, you can use Scrum in any number of ways in your own best practices, but Jeff and I have always focused on Scrum being small and simple in an immutable framework. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that happened that's a turning point over the last three years is Jeff and I nailed the basics of Scrum down and published it. So everyone can use it for any number of things, mm -hmm. but Scrum itself is very well defined. We even built an, an assessment where people can test their knowledge of it, um, but p people no longer have to say, well, that's Scrum or that's not Scrum. Mm -hmm. It's there and known. That's the Scrum Guide? Yes. Published in I don't know how many languages and uh, See, translated. I think it's 30 now. Wow. A lot. That's right? a lot. A lot of um, eager, hardworking translators. Wow. That's fantastic. And it's a very generous gift to the community because it's free of charge. You can just download it and uh, from scrum.org. Jeff and I have always um, thought of Scrum as being free and to the community. Mm -hmm. Scrum.org today, three years later, uh, there are a lot of trainers. Ah. The, the organization grew quite a bit. There are. Um, we've always focused at scrum.org not on training or coaching but on building quality um, courseware, intellectual property mm -hmm. um, assessments. And, and we've organized those by specific skill within Scrum, so Scrum Master Product Owner mm -hmm. Development Team, as well as some basic foundational information. And then we go out and we, we search out for, identify, and vet the very best um, software people we can in the industry mm -hmm. and engage them to become partners with our company and to work with us both in using our materials mm -hmm. as well as to improve the materials and to join us in our goal of improving the software profession. Right. But it, isn't, it like, isn't it like that the interest of more than 100 trainers now Yes. showing the respect towards the intellectual property and the quality of course were that there are more than 100 people out there right now around the globe yes and it, and it is around the globe and a number of them are um, organizations of three or four hundred people mm -hmm. I think one of our latest um, partners in this was Cap Gemini wow that's a big one yeah awesome. and and they're very devoted to the excellence in software development mm -hmm. so it's become a pleasure to work with them mm -hmm. that's great we also um, talked a little bit beforehand uh, about the number of assessments being taken, and it's just, I think the number is so big that we don't, we can't really say what it is because it's just so many. Well, we, we do know that I think it's, it was last month, it was over 6,000. Mm. Um, so the number of people who want to test um, their knowledge about both what Scrum is as well as are they using it in the best ways, mm. um, significant. So six thousand in one month. Yeah, 
that's a that's a very steep number. Uh, people, people spending time going through this. Yeah. You know, I mean. You well, they want to know. They want to know. Yeah. They want to know. I, I wanted I, to know. I'm out there. I'm using Scrum. And, oh, is there anything I could do better? Yeah. Let me try this assessment and see if I'm mm -hmm. on track. Mm -hmm. Very good. It, it did work. Uh, it does work very well, and it's free. Yeah. Um, and then when you do, you, you want to go through the training, actually, and you want to go through the official certification, which is similar in format to the assessment, then... Uh, well, there's no actual certification. If, if you take the assessment and you get, let's say, 85%, 85% it is, right? you are given a letter yeah. saying that you scored 85% or higher. Or higher, yeah. Right. Yeah, but there's no... There's no certification. Yeah, yeah. how can you certify yeah. anything? That you get the you get the acknowledgement that you passed, right right past the threshold yes okay I did yes you did <laughs> yeah <laughs> those those people that are courageous take our advanced assessments yeah which are all um, all essay questions mm -hmm. and there you have to talk about this reasoning the thinking behind how you would address certain problems if you were using Scrum. Mm -hmm. And that's a very hard um, assessment where I think it's like 65% of the people who take it um, pass with an adequate score. Mm -hmm. And the others are can't think through tough situations well enough. Yeah. So this is a very different style of testing as the essay-based, right? It's very time-consuming. Yes. Yeah. Very time-consuming on your end. Yes. Those are, those are tough to yeah. grade to, uh, as well as to take. Mm -hmm. They're time boxed assessments, so you can't, you know, go to Google and think about it. You have to mm -hmm. know or not know. Okay. Um, in terms of courses, I think everything like three years ago, if I remember correctly, it was started with the PSM course. At that point, uh, it was called. Uh, we started with the developer depth, course. Yeah. Oh, we yeah we had Scrum in depth, which was the the origin mm -hmm. of of the professional Scrum Master course now. Right, and then this greater vision of yours started with Scrum.org of deploying this entire program of courses. Yes. Where we are, where we are today. If, if you had to think about what's next, I mean, there is this, obviously Scrum Foundation, Scrum Developers, Professional Scrum Master, and all these product owner. Um, what's next? What, what is your, what's your plan in terms of uh, courses or anything I mean where do you take it from here people um, adopt scrum they get trained in scrum uh, but many many of our of our people we work with um, aren't just using scrum to use scrum they're using it to gain agility mm -hmm. they're using it to become better software development organizations which is of course continuous improvement mm -hmm. and what they want to know is how are we doing and what could we do better to increase the value we get from doing this? So we're, we're um, putting in place a, a continuous improvement framework mm -hmm. where people will be able to look and plan, look at how they're doing now, how are the practices they're using benefiting them, what are the qualitative and quantitative metrics that reflect that, mm -hmm. and then plan what are the next steps to increase the um, um, benefits they get to increase their agility. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to give um, the people using Scrum a framework within which they can see how they're doing and what to do next. Awesome. Yeah. We think this will help them a lot. Yeah. Otherwise they kind of just ask for more training but they don't know if it's beneficial. Right. So here they have a, a way of reflecting on their progress yes. with, with, on their own or with somebody else. They, they have an ability to manage mm -hmm. um, their progress toward agility. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's a great term, right? Yeah. Like the journey to agility. Journey right? to agility. <laughs> I, I've heard that before. <laughs> oh, God. We also, we talked earlier about Jeff and you being a half a mile away from each other. You guys actually, um, uh, you wrote a book together, which we uh, launched officially with the five-year anniversary a few months ago. Yes, we did. And uh, software in 30 days. And uh, it's written by the uh, both creators yeah. of Scrum, you yeah. and Jeff. It, w it was a pleasure. The first thing we did together was a um, announcement paper, a position paper at Upsala 95. And we, of course, have done the Agile Manifesto and have the Scrum Guide out. Um, this is the first book we've written together. Yes. And it's a, it's a statement 
to management everywhere um, that people worldwide are having software built for them in 30 days or less. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't having your software built high quality in 30 days or less, you should go down to your development organization and demand it. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't, you're no longer going to be competitive. Mm -hmm. And this is a book that describes this to them as well as tells them how to launch that journey right. and how to make take advantage. Right. So this is more a, a manager perspective. Yes. On, this is a management book. A management book on uh, how to how to be an, an agile. Yeah. How to get more from yeah. your software developers. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And we have I have a, another a set of books next to me here, which we're going to distribute to the agile New York City community with your signature in it over the months to come Great. as door prizes. So thank you for that as well. Jeff okay. and I thank you. Thank you for listening to Agile FM, the radio for the Agile community. I'm your host, Joe Krebs. If you're interested in more programming and additional podcasts, please go to www.agile.fm. Talk to you soon.